I have to tell you, I learned something in your op-ed piece, uh, not just about your career, which I learned a lot, but I learned something about William Barr that I did not know. And I'm going to just read it directly from the op-ed piece because it tells me a lot. After all, Barr has never actually investigated, charged, or tried a case. He's a well-trained bureaucrat, but has no actual experience as a prosecutor. Uh, and that's the man who's making these judgments, overruling the prosecutors like yourself with the experience. Well, that's true. And uh, I want to make it clear that uh, this is a sad day for me when I feel it is necessary to speak out against the Attorney General of the United States. As you've noted, I've spent almost my entire life in the department. Uh, I loved representing the people of the United States, and it was something that I was proud of every day I worked there. And it's therefore troubling when I see a bureaucrat basically supporting an autocrat, and that's sad. I want to listen to something that Joe Biden said tonight about the Justice Department and the way it's being run now. And he makes a reference just to help guide the audience to the case brought by E. Jean Carroll in New York, where she is suing Donald Trump uh, because she has accused him of rape. Let's listen to what Joe Biden said about that and the Justice Department more generally. But can you remember any Republican president going out there or, or former Democratic president? Go find that guy and prosecute him. Ever hear that? Or by the way, I'm being sued because a woman's accused me of rape. Represent me. Represent me. Personally represent me in the in the state of New York on my not allowing my tax returns. What's that all about? What is that about? So there's Joe Biden identifying the things yeah. that Joe Biden that, that Donald Trump is using the Justice Department for that we have never seen before. Uh I think he may even be soft peddling it. Uh, let me tell you, I hoped, uh, like many of my colleagues, that what he did in mischaracterizing the Mueller report was an honest mistake. It was just a sole misstep. But he has gone so much farther by choosing to selectively meddle at the direction of the uh, president of the United States. You see that in the Stone, the Flynn, the Manafort cases. And it's true as Joe Biden indicated, but he also could have mentioned the Department of Justice weighing in in his suit against Melania Trump's best friend. You know, he tried to block the publication of Michael Cohn's book. Now, the attorney general has a right to weigh in on cases, but he has to do so fairly. It's not proper for him, you know, at the whim or the tweet of the president to castigate Black Lives Matter protesters in Portland but then turned a blind eye when armed right wing militia storm the Michigan state capitol. And I'd go so far to say it was even worse than that, because following the Trump's tweet, then the attorney general tried to defend those actions by saying that he thought the actions there by the governor in trying to impose uh, public health uh, restrictions to help our citizens was the worst restriction of civil rights in slavery. That's just, not only is it nonsense, it's not fair. It's not balanced. You can't represent only one side. The Justice Department in its mission statement makes it clear that we're here to enforce the laws in the United States and defend the interests of the United States, not to serve the whims of a president. The statute of justice, you know, is blind and it's blind to show that the department should be impartial. And that's what the attorney general doesn't realize. And that's uh, what happens when he kowtows, acts as a lapdog to the president. And we've seen this before, from Kelly to Mattis, to Bolton, to Sessions. This president, Donald Trump, has made it crystal clear that there is simply no place in his administration for anyone, anyone who places loyal service to the people of the United States over service to him. That's a problem. It's a big problem.